All right, welcome to Squat Pace Training 1000. Uh, please consult a physician if you haven't begun any exercise program yet. Not all exercises are meant for all people. And here we go. We are starting off our Squat 1000s today with uh, 35 squats per minute. And uh, make sure to keep your weight on your heels. Hopefully you've looked at the squat pace training um, introduction and you understand the form, keeping the knees at least behind the toes as far back as you can. If they're in line with the toes, it's perfectly fine. I generally come right up just about to the toes. You can bend slightly forward at the waist. Try to keep your chest and uh, shoulders up and back. So you want to keep that pat posture nice and straight. It's really important. Um, and what you're able to do when you're doing this body weight squatting is you're able to really recruit the core as well. So suck in your belly button just a little bit, tighten the abs, so you can get a decent core training out of it as well. Weight is on the heels. Keep your shoulders behind the knees too. I'll be changing angles during the workout. I'll be so you can see the different angles that I I train at. Um, but this is definitely an optimally safe way to get cardio. Uh, depending on the paces you're using, you can produce growth hormone. You could build some serious muscle. And, of course, the higher levels of it, you could mix it with other exercises as well. So you could do squat circuit training, which is really the, the highest form of uh, circuit training that's non-impact. It's the safest way to train. So anyway, I started off this this first this workout at 35 squats per minute. It's um, it's a nice warm up pace. Um, hopefully you've done your warm ups. It's very important to warm up prior to uh, any squat training, even though it's non impact. I did about a 10 minute stretch. I stretched my quads, stretched the hamstrings. That's also all up there on the uh, squat pace training. Um, I, I have a playlist that you could go take a look at on workoutwizard.net. Um, and if you're seeing this, chances are that's where you, you picked up this video, hopefully. And um, look at the warm up. I do I do a great quad. Very important to stretch out the calves as well. You can take your your leg, put your heel up on a, a bench or a chair on top of a towel or something soft so that you're protecting your heel and then bend forward reaching toward the foot. It's a great way to stretch out right behind the knee and a little bit of hamstrings and calves. You know, get that calf nice and flexible and you are going to go deeper in the squat. So let's talk about range of motion. You might be a beginner. All right, I'm taking a little break here. I'll continue after this. The next pace is going to be 37.75, almost 38 squats per minute. I'll tell you why there are such weird numbers, too. There we go. I aligned my hips right before I started, right? I pushed it back. I pulled my shoulder blades back and down. So I always want to re readjust your posture every time you, you head into a squat. Double check everything. Make sure your knees are behind the toes. I'm using the, uh, the camera or the screen, actually, as my mirror. It's a great tool. Uh, I did this on Zoom. That's why the quality is not that great, but it's useful, hopefully. <laughs> um, so, where was I? Uh, I was talking about stretches, stretching out the quads and hamstrings. Very important, get that flexibility um, and stretch out the quads. That's the front of your legs. Um, by doing an archer, a yoga archer, if you look that up on um, YouTube or anywhere. I, I also have that on my video. It's a, great position to stretch out in. You could also do that on the floor. So make sure you do those warm-ups before you get into it. But now, yeah, talking about range of motion, ultimately, you don't have to go deeper than legs parallel to the ground. I go to the parallel point and then a little tiny bit deeper, just, <laughs> just in case I start slipping up a little bit. I want to make sure I have that, that padding right? But you really don't have to go butt to the floor, all right? I know a lot of people, I see a lot of people on, on YouTube and online, they, they do these air squats and they go super deep and 
it really uh, doesn't give you much more of a caloric benefit and it can hyper um, flex the knee and uh, it's not going to give you more of a benefit at all for the knee as well. So you want to keep it safe. You want to keep the, the program non-impact and safe and building the tendons around the knees, not breaking them down. So that's the deepest that you should go right there. I mean, parallel to the ground. And then you want to stand upright. Um, we're going to be playing with different speeds today. Um, now, if you're a beginner, let me just tell you, if you're a beginner, obviously take frequent breaks. You know, this is just, I'm doing this, this is just a typical mix of squat paces for me. I'll be putting up a lot of different paces. Some days I'll be doing some very slow paces. Some days I'm going to go for all burnout paces. And then I'll be doing pyramids. I'll be doing all different squat paces for you. And you can follow along or... Um, or not, or just do the best that you can. All right, we're going to go up now. This is going to be 38.5, so round that up. You're almost at 39 squats per minute, so we're speeding it up slowly. We're going to go through 10 paces because I'm doing uh, 100 reps per set, 100 reps straight at a different pace. Each pace is going to be a little bit faster. So this is 38.5. Um, so if you're a beginner, just go as deep as you can. Don't force yourself to go too deep. Uh, if you're only going halfway down or a quarter of the way down, it's perfectly fine. Or if you're using a chair, uh, to, you, to aim for, to keep it as safe as possible on the knees, then just do that. You know, this is, this is all about you. And when I do it, it's all about me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if, if you're doing it to this video, then we're doing it together. That's great. You do the best that you can. You might even be more advanced than me. So you just, um, maybe I'm holding you back then. Then you could go a little bit faster or, you know, whatever you choose to do. This is just a tool so you can squat along uh, and get some really intense workouts. This is going to get really cardio. You're going to watch me sweat. I'm going to start sweating probably at the halfway point quite a bit. It's very aerobic, no doubt. Um, so yeah, so we have uh, a bunch of different paces. So the paces that we're gonna do, we started with 35, then we went to 37.75, then 38.5 is what this one is. And then we will be speeding it up to 39, 40, 43, 44, 46, 47, and then finishing off today in this workout with 48.5 squats per minute pace, which is pretty fast. It's definitely um, a challenging pace. If you can't keep up with the paces, just go at your own pace. You'll notice there's no music that I've put to this. It's just a visual that you could follow along with. Uh, and I'll just narrate these videos so that um, we can occasionally go over the form, just so, just in case you start losing form. But let me just remind you, you know, so that you can be comfortable, take breaks, listen to your body, okay? I've been squatting for 20 years. Uh, it took me 10 years of building up before I, I set the world record in most squats in 24 hours. Okay, I'm taking a little breather here. It must have been another 100. Now I'm going to be speeding up to 39 per minute. Check it off there. And I changed the angles. You know, that was front angle. Now you get a sort of a 45 degree angle. Yeah, and this was a great... I did this on a Sunday morning. It was a great way to... Uh, wake my body up, uh, get some growth hormone pumping, certain, but certainly by the end. And, uh, and since I know my calories per squat, I did a thousand squats, uh, as you, you know, the video will show you. And that is, a, I get about 0.4 calories per squat. So that means I burned 400 calories in the workout that you're going to witness here, which uh, is 27 minutes and 38 seconds. So it was 400 calories. 
that's really good, right? Um, less than half an hour and 400 calories. And it's non-impact. Where else are you going to see that? Um, I started squatting after I, so, uh, uh, a person I was working with took me to a, uh, a spin class about 20 years ago. And uh, it was an amazing class. I really was very, very impressed with how I felt afterwards, the, the, the vitality, the, just the, the euphoria, the energy. Loved the muscle groups. I was using all the major muscle groups. It was a great spin class. And uh, I went home and I was thinking, oh my God, what I, I want to continue doing that, you know, a spin class. I mean, I could ride on a bike and everything, an indoor bike. I guess I could have done that too. I didn't have one handy at the time, but I thought, right, what, what are the muscle groups that we were using? What could I do? And I had been, you know, studying exercise physiology and a number of different practices and uh, calorie expenditure based on movement. And I realized the squat, it doesn't require any equipment. Let me test it out. So the next morning I woke up and um, warmed up a little, did 20 squats. And I felt like, wow, that was the same muscle group. Uh, but it felt even safer. Both feet were on the ground. The stability aspect was amazing. I figured out, I sat down and I thought, let me just do another 20. So I did another 20. And I, and I was like, well, that's all I'm going to do. That's all I, I felt that that was enough, 20 and 20 at that point. So I did 40 total in my first workout. And I decided that I would build up from there. And that's all I, all I did. So I, I you know, I probably the next day, I don't remember exactly how I built it up. I might have done, done 25 and 25 and 30 and 30. Okay, here we go. So we got another break. Next pace is going to be 40 squats per minute, which to me is the, the a base squat pace. I mean, they're all fine. But uh, 40 is what I determined for myself and having trained a number of people who got pretty proficient at the squat, that that was the, the average training pace that most people fa found um, beneficial um, and challenging, challenging enough. <clears throat> and uh, so I set that as the base p pace. Uh, I wrote a bunch of songs at that 40 squat pace pace. I even wrote the squat anthem, doing squat base on 40 squats per minute, a bunch of songs uh, at that pace. And those are the songs that I used as my, um, as my anthems and, and cheerleading songs when I was going for the, uh, the world record. Uh, and uh, yeah, so those 40 squats per minute, that's what I determined. But there's no magic in any pace. It's whatever works for your body. That's just something that I'd observed with uh, people who were athletic and were able to challenge themselves. They felt the 40 was a good training pace. But if you're training, if you feel comfortable at 23, 25, whatever, 17, it doesn't matter. 17 is the slowest pace that I have up on the YouTube channel workoutwizard.net uh, and the fastest oof, I think I don't have the list in front of me but it's something like maybe it's 49 maybe that's the fastest that I get up to on YouTube I don't know but I've taken them all the way up to 70 squats per minute <laughs> 70 squats per minute is very fast uh, I, I know that um, there are some world records out there where people are doing uh about 78 squats per minute for three minutes. Um, that's the world record, Guinness World Record, I believe. That's what it comes to, 78 squats per minute, something like that, 77, 78. And to get a full range of motion at that pace is almost impossible. You can't really stand up because as soon as you come somewhat upright, you have to go back down to get the next rep. So it's not really humanly possible to get a great form at 78 squats per minute. You can do pretty well, but it's never going to be as good as my, my form is in this video right now. Drinking a little bit of water here. You should take a sip of water too. That was 40. We're now going to 43 squats per minute. 
So we have four more paces to go. Yeah, it's okay to take some breaks in between. Let that lactic acid settle back to sugar and then recharge yourself. Weight is on the heels. Try to keep that chest up. Look up to the corner of the room. Check every now and then up to the corner of the room. Try to bring your shoulder blades back and down. If you notice, sometimes, uh, right now I'm not doing it so much, but I like to turn my pinkies in, so my palms up. By doing that, I um, you can actually bring your shoulders back and down a little bit more. One of the things with squatting is you want to make sure, and a lot of things like even walking, um, repetitive movement that's forward, uh, is that you want to watch your posture. Because if you're going to do this for the rest of your life, and I hope that you're taking me on with this because it is an amazing cardio and strengthening and power training routine, the squat training. If you're going to take this on, you're going to want to make sure that you, you keep your posture nice and straight. And so you want to check in every now and then. So you want to squeeze your shoulder blades back and down and look up to the corner of the room. Check your posture. Check your posture. So we are now doing 43 squats per minute. Sorry, we after this, we have four more paces, right? After this, we have the 44, then the 46, the 47, and the 48 and a half. That's on our agenda today. Yeah, it's interesting looking back at the um, at the video. Um, I could see I could definitely see a sheen developing. I'm definitely perspiring at this point. And just again a reminder if, if you need to stop, take breaks. If you're trying to keep up with the pace uh, and you're straining, don't strain. Don't strain. You gotta train, not strain. Take more breaks. You might need a five minute break, you might need a one minute break. It's up to you. Listen to your body. And if you might want to do this video a few times, a number of times, and figure out how you can save energy here and there. I'll let you in on a little secret. Um, oh, I say we're going up. All right, we're going to go to 44 at this point. All right. Yeah, I'm feeling it at this point. You know, I could see that. Every day is a little different. So, all right, so I guess I'm, I'm doing the back position here. The pelvic tilt, where's the pelvic? I didn't do the pelvic tilt that well that time. All right, keep that chest up, keep that chin up. Keep your weight on your heels. All right, so, once it starts burning at this point, my, my legs were pretty much burning at this point. Um, and uh, that's definitely a sign that you're producing some growth hormone tapping into the uh, more of the fast twitch side of the two A muscle fibers. That's the beauty of the squat. I love that. The body weight squat, that is. Um, slow twitch fibers type 1 fibers, they they use oxygen well. It's what you use just walking around or any, anytime you're doing cardio. Uh, and then when you tap, type, tap into the type 2 fibers, you're getting the, the fast twitch. Those are the muscles that can hypertrophy, so get bigger. Um, bodybuilders have a lot of that or build a lot of that. And um, type 2A is a hybrid between slow and fast so you can work out cardio but you're also working you kind of vacillate between cardio and anaerobic uh and tap into those the fast switch side of the 2a so you're you're actually it's giving that switch to produce growth hormone powerful and that's why it's the fountain of youth and the reason i say that is i don't just even say that in jest i mean it seriously because we're not breaking the body down in order to stimulate all these hormones, this fitness hormone, and this cascade of different fitness anabolic hormones that come with it. We're, we're doing this without impact on the joints, and that's crucial. 
uh, a lot of exercise programs, you're going to be doing high intensity moves, tapping into more of the type 2B in many cases, uh, but also fatiguing tendons and putting yourself into a situation where um, risk to benefit ratio is not in your favor necessarily. With the squat, if you build safely, oh, I'm going to be going up here. If you build safely, there's going to be 46 squats per minute. Uh, take your time, build safely and slowly with the squat. You're going to have for the rest of your life a tool that's, um, I dare even say, sort of a, a fitness um, version of a, a therapy tool that you can keep strengthening your tendons with around your knees and getting stronger and stronger. Squatting is not knee bends. Knee bends uh, torque the knee a little bit too much and can tear cartilage and cause meniscus issues. So this is using a lot of the big muscles, buttocks, the, uh, the quadriceps, the core. I mean, just to support myself, to stay upright like that is back and core. It's all core. Um, flexion that's going on it doesn't really look like it when you know but it really when you when i'm when i'm doing it i really feel that so by leaning back on the heels by tightening the core by actually sucking it back you can really recruit all the muscles the spin ia just everything just to keep yourself erect like that so it is it can be a total body now total body training so if if you add in you know, this is just squat training, but if you add in just to do like a squat row, for example, with dumbbells, which I do with um, varies, 10s, 12s, 15s usually, it's an amazing movement just with a pair of dumbbells. You, the same movement that, that I'm doing with my arms basically right now, but with a pair of dumbbells in my hands, let's say 15 pounds, you're getting your, your lats, you're getting, um, sorry, your, your deltoids, you're getting your core, you're getting your biceps, and then you're getting all the core the core and lower body muscles, and you're producing the growth hormone. It's perfect. You take that squat row and just throw in some abs, and you've got a total body workout. It is a perfect way to train, and you don't, other than the dumbbells, if you do that, you don't need equipment. So that's if you have dumbbells. I mean, you could do so many things even without uh, weights. I have a routine called the circuit of life. Oh. I'm stopping there. That means we're going to the next pace. Only two paces left, my friends. Going to 47. I got a program called the Circuit of Life, which has uh, three uh, different fixed levels and then a fourth, which is sort of a personalized level. Here we go. Um, so it, it's it's got a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, how to approach it. And it's a total body fitness training system that um, doesn't require any equipment. It's it's perfect. So uh, perfect for these times. Uh, if you can't get to a gym or you're traveling, it's the way to go. I call it the circuit of life. Total body fitness training system. Listen, I, I do this kind of training. I keep a year-round 8 to 10% body fat. And I don't necessarily want to, I don't care so much about that, but um, I, I don't go extremely low in body fat. There was a time when I really tried to reduce body fat and it, it, it wasn't anything that uh, I wanted to maintain. I felt that uh, having a little bit of body fat is good, especially for fitness, for energy, very important for the endurance work. It's the fitness range of fat still. It's it's a good uh, range of body fat. So my point is this: I don't do anything for that. I I I, uh, I don't have any special diet whatsoever. I eat well. I eat whole foods. I stay away from sugar. Um, minimally drink alcohol. Just m maybe during holidays. Maybe maybe if after I mow the lawn in the summer, <laughs> you know, something like that. But that's about it. Uh, otherwise, very healthful. Think of eating protein at every meal, at every snack. Look at that. I'm definitely feeling something there. Looks like I have a big smile on my face, but it's it's a grimace because I, I think I'm feeling that burn. It's feeling pretty good. So 
this training just naturally zaps body fat. Period. If I were to even take one week of focusing on carb reduction, um, increasing my... Just one week, I could easily uh, get myself down to 4 or 5% body fat. Don't want to do that. But all right, this is going to be the final pace, 48.5, because the, the metabolism just revs when you do squats. I'll tell you one more thing. All right, I think... Um, my quads were feeling a little tight, so let's all stretch together. <laughs> Do that quad stretch. All right. He says go. 48.5. Final pace of 100, and then we're done for today's workout of squat pace training. Now, thank you for joining me. We're almost there, people. Um... So going up and down, there's research on this. Um, Dr. Joan Vernikos, who was hired by NASA to figure out how to help the astronauts prevent atrophy when they got off of the spaceship. I think this was back in the late 60s, I think so. So 30-year study. I don't want to get into the details of how she did it, but if you Google Dr. Joan Vernikos, you can read about it. And what she discovered was standing up just standing up, exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> it stimulates hormones in the body, stimulates lipoprotein lipase, which is an enzyme that mobilizes fat out of the cells. Not that she recommends that you do this many squats at all. She recommends standing up, um, moving up against gravity every hour. Um, you know, 10 times... 15 times. She doesn't really give a fixed number, 10, 20, 30. Um, but the idea is when you stand up to not, to, to not be sedentary and to not be sitting for excessively long periods of time is the goal. The more you break that line moving up against gravity, the more it's, it's, it's a force. We, we live in this force called gravity and we were just used to it. But the reality is it's a force that's always working against us. So if we work with it, go up against it, go up against it, we stimulate these hormones naturally. And so when you're working with squat training, you're really teasing that body and that relationship with gravity, up against gravity, and it just keeps releasing that hormone. So the metabolism stays revved. Um, I've had people tell me that they're just so hungry <laughs> after you know, doing squat training, squat pace training. Oh. There we go. So that's our workout for today. Thank you for joining me. That's 1,000 squats. Hope, hopefully you'll join me for another uh, routine at another point. And that's, that's our time, 27 minutes, 38 seconds. Have a wonderful day.